There's a bomb on the roof. You'll never get there on time, Spider-Man. We'll see about that. It's Spider-Man and the exploding skyscraper. You've got five seconds, Spider-Man. Spider-Man rigs his escape net and starts his treacherous climb. Can Spider-Man get there in time? Three seconds. Too late, I'm bailing out. Time's up. I got away. Spider-Man and the exploding skyscraper with activator and spider car. Amigo. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another installment of Migo Museum's Vintage Migo. We're going to do something a little different this week and talk about some items that Migo didn't produce for the world's greatest superhero line. Now, Migo was synonymous with the word superhero in the 1970s and certainly one of the pioneers of licensed action figure success. Many companies in the 1980s would take the Migo formula and thrive on it. While Mego had an unprecedented amount of success in the 70s and 80s with the stables of characters from the houses of Marvel and DC, there's always going to be something that won't make the cut, even with a successful company. So here's a countdown of some of the more interesting concepts that just didn't make it to market for the world's greatest superheroes. Spider-Man and the Exploding Tower, 1977 for the Comic Action Heroes line. The comic action line was created so Mego could offer more elaborate playset environments for the superheroes. This particular playset involved a three and three quarter inch Spider-Man trying to stop a building from exploding, which I guess he fails to do, and that is kind of the concept of all the comic action hero sets. Stuff blows up. The set included a smaller version of the spider car that Mego had introduced in 1976. Here's why it probably didn't get made. The, the playset was pitched a year after the initial launch of the Comic Action Heroes, and sales of the initial offer probably didn't warrant a new higher-cost item. The one cherry on top of all of this is that the Spider Car did make it to production in 1978 as part of this reduced Comic Action Hero line. It would then carry over to the Pocket Heroes line, and it would be produced until Mego went out of business. So we did at least get the car out of this deal. Spider-Man's Alley Playset The Mego Pocket Superheroes line in 1980 was selling well enough that Mego explored making a variety of playsets for them. This one enjoyed Spider-Man and the Hulk having adventures in what looks like a dirty alley. It's pretty easy to figure out why this didn't get made. It's not terribly interesting. Mego didn't even give Spider-Man his own lair with computers or anything. It just looks like a dingy apartment. Uh, as concepts go, this one was pretty soft. And buyers did order the Pocket Superheroes Batcave that year. So I think it really was just a matter of this not being very interesting. The Growling Hulk figure. This was pitched in the 1980 Mego catalog, and it is a deluxe figure. It is 22 inches tall, had very little articulation, and made growling noises when you raised his arms and pushed the button on the back of his neck. I think it didn't get made because competitors like Remco and Fun Stuff both had large Hulk figures that had special features on the market already. It's likely Mego just created this to combat competition, but because it was already out there, this just never got made. Wonder Woman's Paradise Island playset. This was a playset for the 12-inch Wonder Woman line that included a Paradise Island throne room that Wonder Woman could actually destroy. I don't know why she'd wreck her mom's house, but there it was. I'm not 100% sure why this didn't get made. Mego tried to produce two different playsets for the 12-inch Wonder Woman line. This was the deluxe version in 77, and then they had a lower-cost version later on in 78. Both times, the product seemed to be shot down. Despite the popularity of the television series, it's really hard to say why it didn't get picked up. I think it was just a problem with competition. You had the Bionic Woman from Kenner, you had Mego's own share, and, of course, Barbie... 
there was a lot of play sets going around, and, and I just think Wonder Woman kind of got left out. If no catalog wanted to pick this up for the Christmas season, it's a hard sell. Superman the Movie Playset from 1978. This was pitched in the 1978 Mego catalog. It is a three-way action, yikes, playset environment featuring a series of backdrops featuring the Fortress of Solitude, Jor-El's Lab on Krypton, Luther and Zod's Evil Lair, and the Metropolis Skyline so you could fly Superman by. Honestly, I think this just didn't get made because it is not one of Migo's strongest efforts. It appears to just be entirely cardboard and features little to no play value for a child. A playset usually has a hook, you know, a transporter feature, or something that you really actually want. And this just is backdrops, which is sadly all we usually get these days. Magnetic 12-inch Spider-Man. This would have been a Spider-Man doll that actually stuck to stuff. What kid wouldn't want that? I, I don't understand why this didn't happen. According to every record I have, Mego seems to have done a bit of a 180 on this figure. It was offered in the 1978 Toy Fair catalog, so that's around February. But when their 1978 Spring Supplement came out a month or so later, the 12-inch Spider-Man was no longer magnetic and was just a 12-inch basic figure with a web on the card. This 12-inch Spider-Man was also the only character that was offered on a card like this. The best theory I can think of is Mego had started developing the deluxe web-spinning Spider-Man concept that they would introduce in 1979. So they put the brakes on Magnetic Spider-Man, giving the magnetic powers to Batman and Robin, until they developed the web-spinning concept, which I'm assuming they thought would be a stronger deluxe sell. They seem to have sold a bundle of these 12-inch Spider-Mans. They probably rushed the 12-inch figure on the market because of the popularity of the 8-inch Spider-Man figure and the, you know, the CBS Nicholas Hammond television series around that time. Finally, the superhero adventure sets from 1974. These are one of the earliest things that didn't make the cut for Mego. This is the second year of the world's greatest superheroes, and Mego pitched a concept of different adventure sets for characters. This was the, you know, the typical razors and razor blades approach that was so common in other lines like G.I. Joe, Big Jim, and the uh, Gabriel Lone Ranger series. It particularly reminds me of those. And if you give these a close look, these are very crude mock-ups made with pieces from G.I. Joe Adventure Team and even Captain Action from the 60s. I think these didn't get made because they're all a bit slapdash if you look at them. They don't they look kind of hastily thrown together. And maybe the toy industry was a little leery of doing any sort of accessory sets for superheroes. Mego was, of course, an innovator in creating actual action figures of superheroes, and that was their popularity, and it was growing. And it just may have been too early to throw down with accessories. Mego followed up in 74 with, you know, an incredible amount of vehicles, which just skyrocketed for the success of the Mego superheroes. So I think that was the right direction, and I'm not, honestly not surprised these didn't get released. If you had to pick one of these toys for release, what would it be? You can let me know in the comments below this video, or you can hit me up at Twitter, at Mego Museum. We have a growing Facebook group called Mego Mania, where we talk Mego all the time. And of course, we have the forums at MegoMuseum.com, where we talk new, custom, and of course, vintage Mego. Thank you, as always, for watching. If you're new to this, I hope you'll consider hitting like and subscribe. Until next time, have fun. And here, it's Spider-Car, complete with Spider-Man and the Incredible Hulk. You can pretend they're heading for Spider-Man Alley. Sold separately, assembly required. Stop yelling, you can drive. Batmobile and Spider-Car come complete with action figures. Each car sold separately by Miko.